Hello Techies, welcome to Google Electric. Today's topic is uh, finding the MOSFET ON resistance which is also called as uh, RDS ON. So over screen you can see like uh, this is a MOSFET and channel power MOSFET 40 volt 300 amps and beside that you can see this is a 0.57 milli ohm so basically this is a on resistance so do you think that this is actually the on resistance but no actually this is not the on resistance but there is a trick which is hidden so if you see like uh, you go to on resistance like uh, if you see here at junction temperature 25 degrees Celsius at 80 amps drain current you see like uh, there are two on resistance mentioned 0.46 ohm to 0.57 milli ohms so basically what you should choose you should choose 0.46 milli ohm of 0.57 milli ohms uh, between this so what exactly is the RDS on of this MOSFET as a worst case, uh, we should take 0.57 milli ohms uh, because if you take this as a worst case RDS on, then this will give you, give you the maximum power dissipation, and accordingly, you will design your converter safely. So, you choose a coolant such a way that uh, your uh, temperature should not go beyond 150 degrees Celsius, as you see here. Uh, for this is 175 degrees Celsius so if you choose wrong RDS on and uh, you decide heat sink or decide some coolant based on wrong assumption and you end up with uh, getting your fat burn so the main intention of this video is to uh, find what exactly is uh, RDS on and how you should choose that so here are two values like 0.46 milli ohm 0.57 milli ohm so as a worst case you should always choose 0.57 milli ohms but here is also a trick is lying that i will tell you so if you go to some characteristics um, so moving to characteristics of uh, rds on so over here you if you see like uh, uh, here it is uh, on the y-axis normalized drain to source on resistance which is uh, normalized RDS on and over the x-axis you see junction temperature so junction temperature is varying from minus 80 degrees Celsius to almost 200 degrees Celsius so this characteristics is drawn at 80 amps so if you see like at minus 40 you get pointed at 0 you get around 0.9 at 40 you get something 1.1 so between this 0 to 40 degree celsius you get uh, uh, around uh, 25 degree celsius here and if you see here that will go to 1 so at 25 degree celsius this uh, normalization factor is 1 so for your worst case like your maximum fat rating is 175 so you don't want your fat to run out of uh, 175 degrees celsius so uh, you should choose normalized factor at 175 degrees celsius so that is around here so if you go here and check out the y-axis then you will end up at around 1.75 so you got here 1.75 as a normalization factor so what you have to do is multiply this 1.75 to your maximum rd zone that is 0.57 multiplying 0.57 into 1.75 will give you the actual rds on that you should consider while designing your converter so because as you choose as a worst case you choose maximum RDS on so that will give you more junction temperature and your design will be safe and also if you see like uh, uh, this one is measured at uh, 80 amps so you may not uh, think like uh, what about 300 amps so basically this characteristics of RDS on with respect to temperature uh, doesn't vary much that remains almost same so 
let me try to find out such characteristics okay so if you see here drain current with respect to case temperature so basically they are giving here as a case temperature so if you see like uh, um, uh, okay this case temperature we are finding out rds on let me check so drain current to okay this is not the right one normalized okay okay so basically this is not provided but usually um, uh, with respect to current RDS on doesn't vary much so that almost remains constant so what you have to do is multiply normalization factor to your maximum worst case value RDS on that will be your maximum RDS on that you should consider while designing any heat sink or coolant okay so I hope uh, you got much information about RDS on so check out my website uh, bahuaelectric.com so there you will get uh, more cool stuff related technology renewable energy electric vehicle automation just check out there and you will find much interesting topic there so thanks for now see you